Hi everybody, and welcome back. Today we're going to be tackling the demon lord and creator of the gnolls, Yinagru himself, by Gaelforce Knight. We'll start with preparation. So the first step after unboxing it is going to be to give him a bath to get rid of any kind of gunk or residue that might be left on him from the moulding process. So in a large bowl or pan, just fill it with warm water and one drop of soap or washing up liquid, and in he goes. And then we take a soft bristle toothbrush and just really scrub every single part of this mini. And let's make sure that we brush his little teeth while we're here. Once that's done, they go back in for a rinse and then a wash under the tap just to get rid of any soap residue that might be left. And then we can just leave it to air dry, which takes about a day. Next is assembly and priming. The first thing we need to do is glue them together. For this, I'm just using super glue. I strongly recommend gel based super glue over liquid. You get a lot more control over where it goes, and you don't end up getting glue where it doesn't belong and then gluing your fingers together, for example. And for now, I'm leaving him unglued from the base to make it easier to paint. The next step is to prime it, and for this, I'm using Badger Steinor Res Brown Primer. So this is because it's closer to the final colours that I'll be using. I also find it easier to adjust tones, starting from a middle colour like grey or brown compared to something like black or white. For the base coats of the skin, we'll be using Charred Brown and Beastie Brown by Vallejo, and applying a wash of Dragonhoff Nightshade from Citadel. There's a lot of brown on this figure, and there's a risk it could all look the same by the time I'm done, so I am going to try and make things a little bit more interesting by using different shades of brown, as well as by varying things like the washes that are used. I'm starting with the skin because I honestly find it the hardest part to paint of almost any figure and be happy with it. Also, once it's completed, it gives me a good idea of if I need to make any adjustments before I move on. The final reason is that I just find it easier to paint the skin first. If I'm painted the skin last, there is a pretty high risk that I'm going to paint over something I've already painted, and I'm going to have to try and come back and fix that. Using my airbrush, I am going to come in and base coat with charred brown, making sure to cover all of the details here. What's important about this is that this colour is actually darker than the primer that we used, so we also need to make sure that we spray from below to darken the shadows. The next step is to come in with Beastie Brown, sprayed at about a 45 to 60 degree angle. We can add a little highlight or two later if it's needed. Now I did experiment with all sorts of colour mixes for the skin, with layering and washes and re-highlighting things, but in the end the best result for the effect I wanted was to just go for the pure two colours, Charred Brown and Beastie Brown, with a diluted wash. With Beastie Brown in particular, it can take a while to build up the coat, so don't be tempted to go heavy on the airbrush and pull the trigger all the way back if it looks like there's no effect. This is going to take a couple of coats to build up, so go slowly, go thin, and take your time. Before applying the wash, I will actually be applying gloss varnish to the entire mini. Now I'll cover why in a second, but this is the varnish that I use these days. For almost pretty much everything, I use Vallejo Mecca, and this comes in gloss and in matte. The reason I use this varnish is it is pre-diluted, which means it will spray right out of the airbrush from the bottle. I don't need to mess around with diluting it. It's something I always struggled with, was diluting varnish correctly. It would either be too thin and just kind of trickle down the, the mini, or too thick and just clog up the airbrush. So this stuff saves me all of the hassle and has made my life a lot easier. So why gloss varnish now? 
The first is to protect some of the work we've already done. The main reason though is to help when we apply the wash and if it hits an area that has gloss varnish on it, then it will actually break the surface tension of the wash and it should help it stay off the higher areas and run into the lower ones. Now we can apply the wash, which is Drakenhof Nightshade, thinned about 4 to 1 with Lamian Medium. Using this as a neat wash would just be way too strong for what we're trying to achieve here. If you look at skin, it's all about these subtle colour shifts and transitions, so that's why we're thinning the wash. The other thing to be careful of is when we apply it, we have to be pretty light with it. If it looks at all like it's pulling anywhere, then I just come back and wick away some of that excess like you could see on the foot here. With this dry, our skin tone's complete. Our next phase is to block in the rest of the other colours that we will be using. For the metal, we'll be using Vallejo Metal Steel. For the leather armour, we'll be using Vallejo Leather Brown and Scale 75 Dubai Brown. For the nails, stitching, rope and bandages on the arm, we'll be using Vallejo Bone White and for the hair, Black Ink. And for the loincloth, we'll be using Scale 75 Field Grey. We'll start with the leather brown and block in the tunic that he is wearing. If you have keen perception, you will see that I've also painted the bracer straps the same colour here, but in the end it was just too bright, so I darkened it to Dubai Brown later. I'm actually painting over the metal plates of the armour at this stage. It's simply faster to cover everything and come back and paint in the metal later, rather than be laborious about it now. Do take care though where the tunic ends and either the skin or the bandages begin. This took a couple of coats to cover everything. Next, we can come back in and start to block out the hair with black ink. I advise you to be very careful with this step. Ink is far more fluid than paint and it can easily spatter all over the mini that we've just painted. So here I am rotating the figure to make painting the angles easier. Just be delicate and take your time. I'm going to block in the mane and also the tufts of fur on the back of the feet. We can now move on to the loincloth with pure field grey. This is going to take several coats to cover the brown smoothly, so as before, take your time and just go for thin smooth coats. And don't forget to hit the sides of the loincloth too. Dubai Brown is next, painting in the leather straps on the arm and leg armour. And with those done, it's now time for the metallics. We're going to take the steel paint and go over the flail, the armour plates, the chains and leg and shoulder armour, as well as the buckles on the leather straps.
At this stage I'm not doing the metal armor plates over the leather tunic because I want to apply the wash to the leather first and hopefully get some shadows around those plates along the way. Before that step however, we do just need to pick out the bandages and stitching detail with bone white. For the stitching, use a detail brush. If you miss or you overdo it, just like I did here, just use your finger or a damp brush to smudge off the excess while it's still wet. We'll keep using bone white for the cords that hold the armour together. Next, we can move on to shading, and we'll be using a couple of washes for Yinigu. For the leather and rope, we'll be using Agrax Earthshade. For the metal, we'll be using non-oil. For the teeth and nails, we'll be using Seraphim Sepia. And to tint the metal later on, we'll be using Drakenhof Nightshade. First, we'll come in and hit all of the leather areas with Agrax Earthshade. This includes the haft of the flail, the leather tunic, and the braces, as well as the ropes holding the leather together. Next we can come in with non-oil and hit all of the metal areas, the flail, the armour plates, and so on. Teeth and nails and metal plates of the armour we will come back and tint later. With those washes applied, we can then move into the first of the highlighting phase, and for this we will need a selection of paints. We'll need our silver paint for the metal, we'll need charred brown to bring in some of those flesh shadows, we will use deep red by scale colour for the tongue of Yinagu, field grey for the tunic, and to mix some colours and bring in some highlights we'll be using Liquitex white ink. We'll start by painting the tongue with deep red. With that out of the way, we can then move on to painting in the eyes and the toenails with white ink. The reason I'm using white ink is because of how opaque it is and how well it covers. The eyes are the trickiest part, they're pretty small, so just take a detail brush, brace yourself and brace the figure, and just very very gently block out those details. If we get it wrong, if we go over the area, we can use charred brown to bring the eye back in. You might find it easier to go in with a larger brush and white ink and paint around the entire eye area, then come back later with charred brown and bring the shadows back down. This is actually what I ended up doing, and you can see the touch-ups later in the video. To highlight the loincloth, we'll be taking the field grey, mix it with one drop of white ink, and then use the edge of the brush to pick out the highlights. As you can see here, my hand skipped when I was painting, and I overshot in the middle of the light cloth. I'm just wiping it down with a damp brush before it dries. Now I'm coming back in with the same small detail brush and the charred brown and just pushing the shadows back in closer to the eye. As far as the toenails on the feet go, they are larger and easier to block out, so they get a couple of coats of white ink, which we'll go over later with bone white. The teeth also get white ink, and a mix of detail brushes here. We'll tone down the white later with the Seraphim Sepia, after all, a giant null would not have perfect teeth, even if we did brush them earlier. As you can see, I keep rotating the mini to get the best angle here. I make it work for me, rather than the other way around. And for the bottom teeth, I actually need to swap down to, I think, my smallest brush, and just pick out those details very, very carefully. Now we can move on to some of the final details. For that we will need Elf Skin Tone, Off-White, Rust, 
and a couple of technical paints, Typhus Corrosion and Blood for the Blood God. This is in addition to the paints that we've used previously. First of all, we're going to pick out the metal plates over the leather tunic. I'm coming back in with steel paint to do this. Be careful not to hit any of the tunic that we've painted and washed already, so just go slow, take your time, pick out the details. Once it's dry, we can apply a quick coat of non-oil to darken it down a little bit. The next step will be to highlight the bandages. I want to try and keep some of the bone white and wash colour that we applied earlier. I'm going to thin the bone white colour quite a lot and build up the layers until I'm happy with the colours. As you can see here, I am just checking the transparency on my hand before starting to apply it to the model. This is known as glazing, which is where we take very thin paint and apply that just to almost tint the colours up to where we want them to be. I'll repeat this process a couple of times until I'm happy with where the highlights are. The next thing we have to do is to bring the stitching of the armour back, and this is just going to be with the bone white that we used previously, picking the detail brush and just going in and picking out the tops of the stitching. With that done, we will now move into highlighting some of the metal plates, and the areas that we're going to pick out here are going to be things like the edges of the armour plates, the middle of the chains where the light would hit them, the curves on the armour where the light would catch that, and just use the edge of the brush to dry brush the raised parts that are embossed on the shoulder plate and the leg armour. The next step will be detailing some of the metal a little bit more. For the shoulder plates, we're going to be using Typhus Corrosion, which is a technical paint, and we're going to be using Rust for the metal plates that are attached to the leather tunic. Typhus Corrosion is a really interesting technical paint. It basically is great for a grimy, dirty, grubby look where the metal has kind of worn away. The next colour we're going to come in with is Rust. If you don't have a Rust paint, you could use an orange one and that would be just fine. And I'm going to thin this quite a bit and just slowly kind of stipple it onto the metal plates that are attached to the tunic. The next step is we are going to tint the armour and for this we're going to apply Drakenhof Nightshade Unthinned. It does look very dark when it's going on, but washes always do, and this will dry a lot lighter. What it will do is push the metal colours from this grey into blue, which is a complementary colour for brown, and my aim here was that it should just very subtly balance out the figure a little bit. Here's a good shot of what the bandage looks like when I'm done also. Now we can finish up the eyes, and for that we can come in with red ink. If you don't have red ink, any paint will do, and as before, just pick that small brush and apply it over the white. The white's brought up the brightness and the opacity, and the red will give us the colour. Once that's done, we can then come back in with the charred brown and make these final touch-ups and adjustments to the eye sockets. We also need to paint his little nose, his snout, so grab some black paint and fill it in. This is also a good time to start highlighting some of the details on the tunic, and for this I'm using a mix of the leather brown and bone white mixed two to one. So two parts brown, one part bone white. 
We're now into the last stretch, I promise, and we are going to tone down the teeth and the toenails a little bit with the Seraphim sepia wash that we're applying here. When that's dry, we can do the final highlights on the metal, coming back in with the silver paint and basically dry brushing, just not with a large brush, picking up the very tops and curves of the armor plate and these raised areas where the light would catch it to restore some color. So at this point, there's really only a couple of things left to do. We can lighten up the hair with a dry brush of grey. We can also add a few highlights to the face. For this, we are coming in with the elf skin tone, and we need this to be very thin. This is the airbrush paint, so it's actually pretty okay straight out the bottle. If you're using the unthinned paint, then you would need to thin this a lot. And what I'm doing is just applying this very, very gently. Um, there's hardly any paint on the brush at all at this point. I'm just going to pick out the raised areas around the face, so the nose, the ridges near the eyes, and the tops of the ears. To dry brush the hair, I did this off camera, but I took stonewall grey paint and just applied a very, very tiny amount to all of the black hair areas that we painted earlier. All that's left is to bring in the blood paint and just apply a couple of spatters. I've put some on each head of the flail, so three in total, and also just very lightly at the end of the wrapped arm. It's very easy to overdo this kind of effect, so I would say less is definitely more. Apply a little bit go away, come back and see how you like it when you take a look at it. And that's Yinigu completed. If you'd like to support the channel, please subscribe and consider visiting my Patreon page, which can also be found in the About section. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.